collected those in different scenarios that you want to actually go and detect. So something like you're presenting in a meeting, right? Or you're shopping or I'm just or whatever. having an idea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not a very but, busy morning. Not great. Really. So, so we collect all of this data, and then basically what we do is we run this data through our uh, system to essentially infer what the person is doing. And what you can see over here is... So these are all the... These are all the sensors. Right. Right. So from the accelerometer, what we have is, you know, we're trying to infer what the physical activity is, so somebody's walking, sitting, etc. From the microphone, we want to infer, you know, what's playing in the background. Right. And actually, in this specific case, we have part of the real audio clip. We can listen to that. Where a radical risk reward. Uh, so, that's so a typical it's a typical Intel yeah, meeting. Exactly. Yes, risk reward ratio. Is exactly. Like and then from the soft sensing, you know, I'm, you oh, were getting the soft guys. these are all the soft guys, right? There is calendar. You know, you're probably presenting in a meeting through PowerPoint. Right. You know, there's all of this other information. Actually, you just looked at my PowerPoint. <laughs> I think you pretty much have the day. <laughs> exactly. And then from location, you know, we can tell you know where you are. Okay. So now, you know, the system will go recognize these, and you can see that. Now the system that just recognized that you're sedentary, so you happen to be sitting That's in that me. meeting. Yeah. And then there's human speech in the background, makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, you know, there's PowerPoint that you're actually presenting, PowerPoint. and you're actually in some meeting room in, at Intel, right? So then all of this information, which is that first level of inference, gets fused into this high level of, you know, high level algorithm, which is a Bayesian graph in this case, and it detects that you're presenting in a meeting. So that's what you can see. So this is, in this here. is like looking, you know, how confident. Right. That, that sort of yeah, that's the confidence level okay. that you're actually presenting. Yeah, well, I'm pretty confident uh, that you've got it right here. I don't even see a bar coming up <laughs> in any of the other categories. Okay, exactly. so that's how we bring it. That's how we bring it uh, all together. But um, you know, are there you know are there ways that you know that don't require so much you know direct interaction? Yeah. So basically, you know what what's happening here so let me show you an example you know in the presenting in a meeting for example right you could use that to infer things like you know that your wife for example is in a meeting and you don't want to call her so oh right? yeah so that so, happens yeah times. so here we have actually uh, this take a look at this okay so this is actually a sense uh, system that uh, we've built and basically in here you can imagine using this information that we talked about, you know, the activity that you're doing, right. to actually animate an avatar. Okay, right? oh yeah, all these guys are moving. Yeah, so all these guys are moving, these are avatars of, of right. uh, people going about their normal lives, and if they choose to share that information with you, so for example, your wife, right, you could see that, for example, she's in a meeting. Oh, I know she did. Right, so let's see, for example, what Wendy is up to, right? Okay. So here, oh, I'm sorry, that's actually that's here. Correct. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Kira is actually sitting at a cafe, you know, drinking coffee. He gets a phone call. Right. Oh, okay. So now we can see him actually on the phone, and then he stands up, walks, wait for the keynote. Hopefully, <laughs> he actually paid for his coffee. We don't. We don't know that part of the company. Uh, I trust Kira. You know, he's, he's very responsible. Exactly. So that's you know that's one example. Okay. Um, so so basically, you know, we talked about this notion of. Uh, Seeing this in the moment kind of representation of. Uh, so, yeah, at right? glance, I can tell exactly what's going on exactly. all my friends or family or whatever it is. Exactly. So, you know, even another kind of compelling concept of this is if you think about aggregating this context over an extended period of time, right? So, think about, for example, knowing your activities over an extended period of time. That's actually quite compelling. Right, we saw that in the, in the gate demo. Right, right. or, for That's example, your higher level activities. Sure. Right, and, you know. So this is all building up the context, I guess, if I could put it that way, right? So your your context is, is growing and growing. Exactly, and you know, you might ask why, for example, it's important to know, you know, what activity you're doing over an extended period of time, right? But you know, I would argue, for example, the same thing applies to finances, right? Sure. So you know, even though you might know every specific transaction that you make. Right. Understanding how that impacts your whole financial picture, you know, really leads you to look at data over an extended period of time, and then these interesting things start to okay. So besides time, the other dimension is. So there's this other devices, right? So you know, you don't just interact with one device. You're using your laptop. You're using your phone. You go to the TV. So being able to aggregate context across all these different devices. So, so context is even a, a bigger idea than, than any particular device, and I, I want that context to follow me wherever I, uh, wherever I go. So, you know, I think 
I get the feeling we've seen all the pieces now. Can you put it together for us? I mean, how would you actually build an application like the vacation assistant? Absolutely. So, so basically, um, the diagram that you see here is really this kind of architecture framework of how you know we can build these contextual environments. So really, at the heart of this, there is this context framework, which you've seen actually in the folder. Right. right. So there's the context engine piece here, which is really kind of a platform service that's running on the platform. And what it's really doing is, at one level, it's providing this consistent API to be able to bring in this rich data. Kind of a basically. middleware layer, if you will. Exactly. So basically, you know, you can get data from sensors, you can get data from applications, from web services. You know, it can go from any, all of these different sources. Right. And you have this consistent API to flow that data in. Okay. At the same time, you know, we talked about all these entrance algorithms, right, that we need to go, you know, run to infer this data. Right. And there's this, you know, notion of, of an analyzer where it's really extensible. So you can build all of these different algorithms within that analyzer and really leverage across different types of contexts. Okay. So we have a whole collection of, exactly. of inferencing algorithms, if you will, to help us do this. Absolutely. Okay. And then for the application writer, right, there's this, you know, layer, there's this API that provides a way for the applications to extract the context. So you don't necessarily have to know how oh, okay. the context is being So I don't have to be an, an expert in exactly. analysis right. or inferencing. Exactly. So you could say, for example, you know, either say something like, let me know what the person's activity is, mm -hmm. or you can say something like, if the person's activity changed, let me know. Sure. Right? Sure. So all of this is, is part of that context uh, engine, and then there is this notion of sort of a context proxy service okay. that's running in the cloud that actually is responsible for sharing context across ah, the different devices. Okay, so that's the aggregation you were talking about, both exactly. over time and over devices. And over devices and possibly over different people. So I don't have to be walking around with this complete context. It might, it might actually be quite sizable over time. Absolutely. And then, you know, furthermore, you can take that contextual information that's coming from the proxy service and then feed it back into your context engine. So okay. actually you use that to infer more stuff. Terrific. Um, now, it, um, you know, it's pretty clear that as we aggregate this, this context over, over time and over devices that um, the, the information is getting pretty valuable. Uh, you know, I'm not sure I want the world to know my television preferences, uh, for example. Um, does, does the framework do anything to protect the context information? Absolutely. So again, you could see here in this, you know, red uh, release policy, right? So the idea here is that, you know, the user is in complete control. So they can control what context gets shared, right, or, you know, released, to whom that context gets released, and up to what time you want to actually even enable that release to happen, and when do you actually want to expire the data. So digital rights management for context. Exactly. Okay. Well, that's fantastic. And and I really want to thank you. I really appreciate you My coming out here and joining us and you know and giving us sort of this this under the covers look at context aware